Hello and welcome to NBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Me, Silver Quill, want to talk about ponies. Oh, um, hello, Silver Quill. Me, Norman. Me, very confident in me talk. How you do? Why you? Why are you wearing Grimlock face? Me no it's way. Disrespectful. <laughs> Me no way, groups. I cannot speak. <laughs> Even if, uh, anyway, moving on. Also joining us today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. Migration month has passed and the pigeon has returned home to roost. And heavens, for, heavens forbid that we review this issue without our fountain of knowledge because uh, Norman and I simply aren't fit for this. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we'll, we'll manage. It's just robots and ponies, right? I mean, what else could they add? Dinosaurs and construction vehicles? Good heavens, no. Which all fall under the purview of robots. Oddly. I'm trying to think of a smart way to do a segue, but no, there's none. <laughs> Anywho, in today's review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Cross Transformers uh, issue, um, Friendship in Disguise, number two. In this issue, Spike and Grimlock team up against the Constructicon and Pinkie Pie, sorry, and Pinkie Pie's baking show with Gage is interrupted by Shockwave. Hmm. Is Gage a new one? Because I haven't seen him before. Yes, Gage is only recently introduced in the IDW comics, in the second run of the Transformers, if I remember right. Hmm. Wait, you mean... Uh, wait, uh, it says he's from T1? G1? Uh, I, I think so. Yes, well, here, I'll try to explode your brain when we get to that comic. <sighs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, because uh, I, oh no, uh, sorry, I was thinking of the other one, uh, Blur. Wait, yeah, yeah uh, Blur is definitely from G1. Yeah, that, that is confirmed. I, I think he was the Micro Machine guy. <laughs> he started out that way. I don't know if they, I don't know if they had the Micro Machine guy for the series, but definitely for the movie. Oh, all right. But anywho, <clears throat> uh, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think of this one? Well, as we're dealing with two parts to this comic, I I adore the first part. First part is my favorite of the entire uh, friendship is, friendship in disguise run, starring Spike and Grimlock, <laughs> and uh, and the Constructicons. So I'll get to gush about the character interaction then. Pinky and Gage versus Shockwave is fun and silly, but. A surprisingly dark concept, oh. which I which I will run by, uh, I'll run by you when it's time. That one's a little less celebratory because, well, it's Shockwave, and if you know uh. Shockwave, he's uh, he's kind of a big deal. He he's if um, okay, I, I always confuse. Sorry, I'm always confused with Shockwave's position in the Decepticon hierarchy because, um, if I'm not mistaken, Shockwave is Megatron's number two guy or a uh, dependable person. Because if we really look at it, sound um, Starscream is Megatron's number two, I guess. Well, okay, here's again, here's where I can make your your mind melt out your ears. It depends on what continuity or, or media you're consuming. If you're in the cartoons, like the original G1 or Robots in Disguise uh, or even the War for Cybertron series, Shockwave is Megatron's most loyal Decepticon next to Soundwave mm-hmm. and often left in charge of caring for Cybertron. If you go by the comics, he's Megatron's greatest rival for leadership of the Decepticons. He's always, uh, e- well, he's either surpassing uh, Megatron in behind the scenes and then steps in to reveal Megatron's no longer a relevant leader, or he steps up immediately once Megatron has created a gap in the leadership. Oh, that is different from what I know, and 
yeah, I, I guess I only know from uh, cartoons then. Huh. What about Transformers Prime? What was that? I mean, what, how's he, he there? was? He was Megatron's loyal subordinate there and head of all scientific division endeavors. Wasn't he also a silent so, character or something? No, he had lines, and he was a very cold and calculating character. Ah, okay. Sound? What about Soundwave? What? What? Where does he? Where does, where oh, wait, does wait, he wait. Rank? We're talking. So- wait, I'm sorry. We're talking Soundwave or Shockwave? I, First, uh, Shockwave. Shockwave. Now so- we're talking about. Sound- yeah. Shockwave Soundwave is. Soundwave. Had- yeah. Sorry. Wait. Oh, in in Prime, Soundwave did have a vow of silence. Oh. Uh, he'll- it was a different character then. Yes, he he uh, he only spoke once to deliver that classic line: "Soundwave superior, Autobots inferior." <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> I I do I do remember him talking a lot on the show, and he was cool. Like the, his voice was awesome. Exactly right. Uh, but anywho, uh, we can probably gush about Transformers later on. So um, let's get into the comics. If you have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off the comic with Spike writing a letter to Princess... Um, I was about to say Celestia, but it's Twilight. Yes. Uh, Princess Twilight. It doesn't say Twilight, but yes. Anywho. Um, well, it does say Twilight. So sorry. Dear Twilight Sparkle. Am I bad? I was... I was supposed to say Princess Twilight, but words, me good, me me Norman. <laughs> <clears throat> so, anywho, um, Spike writes a letter to uh, Twilight saying that, Hey, Twilight, um, I got no idea what happened and I'm sort of lost. But you know me, um, I'm an experienced Dragon dragon who's seen it all. Um, all sorts of magic, monsters and calamities. And I can safely say... He is out of his element right now because somehow he got transported to Megatron One. No, Met- no. what was the ship called? Metatron One. Oh, mm, I forgot. Uh, the ship is called the Ark, and the computer is Teletran. Oh, Teletran One. All oh, right, okay. Man, that that. Mm. All right, anyhow, um, Spike here meets uh, just exploring the ship and meets up with Greenlock, who is the one protector of the base. And they talk for a bit, and Spike is in awe of Grimlock. He looks, well, if I was Spike and I were to look at Grimlock, even, no, if I'm not even Spike, if I were to look at Grimlock, Grimlock's awesome. The way he portrays himself, the way he stands, the way he looks, he is awesome. And they they just um, communicate a bit and whatnot. And... uh. Spike just asks, where are the other Autobots? And Grimlock says, um, others are on their own missions, and I'm, uh, I'm good on my own. Uh, I'm alone is enough to take care of the Ark. Uh, and just Grimlock just, pr- um, just oozes confidence. Uh, and Spike here is just like, oh man, uh, it must be nice to have so much confidence in yourself. Before Grimlock can say anything, there's an alarm, a proximity alarm, and it shows that the constructor cons are rearing to do some trouble, like putting a shopping center in the middle out of nowhere. I guess that can work right. <coughs> but anywho, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't know because I remember... The constructor cons as basically being they defeat Autobots and actually make the, build them into the structures they create. So you're you're basically stuck in a wall. Oh wow, that's so that would be a pretty freaky uh, mall where like bumblebees just upside down welded into the wall. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> oh no, you you could you could you just imagine like uh, in, on the entrance, Prime says, "Hello and welcome to Walmart." Just saying that every day, and he keeps quiet. The general manager says, "Prime, Optimus Prime, uh, you can't rest. You must well, uh, you must greet the customers." What I have been. What doing. about my? F- 
what about my 401k? It's not existence. <laughs> we're, we're Walmart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but yes. Or even worse, they could be the Montreal construction workers. Hmm. Uh-oh. Yep. <laughs> At least they have their pay and do nothing. <laughs> yes. Uh, and in 10 years, that will still be relevant. <laughs> So, anywho, <clears throat> Grimlock says the uh, constructor cons are coming and he's going to stop them. And Grimlock changes or transforms into his um, Dinobot form and Spike is impressed. Why not? Take a look at him. He is great. So, the constructor cons come in and says that the intel that they had was good. No, Nobody is here to protect the base and they're going to wreck it. But before they can do anything, uh, Grimlock comes in and gives them a good trashing with Spike in the background giving moral support. And now, when, sorry? now when they say they're going to wreck it, did like Fix-It Felix get run over on the way? I guess, yes. <laughs> uh, he, he was about to say, like, I can fix it. And no, because Dr. Khan says, we got this, bro. And <laughs> just ran him over. Mm-hmm. But anywho, uh, <clears throat> Grimlock uh, trashes all the constructor cons and says, "Like you guys, like you know what? There's five of you, and even the five of you couldn't beat me, ha! Huh. There's you, you guys are nothing. Like even you, um, sorry, uh, even you together is no match for Grimlock. And one of the guy, I got no idea who, because I'm not versatile in the constructor cons." Says, oh yeah, how about dish? And transforms into Devastator. Don't look at his undercarriage. Don't look at his undercarriage. You just did. That's Why? I, knew I knew it. I knew we were that- going to get to that. Silver, <laughs> <laughs> just a, a remi- uh, confirm this for me because I, I said that I never really watched the, the Transformers movie from Michael Bay. I only saw the clips uh-huh. on YouTube. He was the guy who was at the uh, pyramids and the, there was a human under him but he was uh, transforming to the big guy and when the, when the people on the uh, on the cell phone ask him where he is he looks up and there's uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a pair of uh, wrecking balls hanging out between uh, his legs and he said he's underneath his testicles. Is that the same one? That was a robot called Devastator. I refuse to acknowledge it as a peer of the original G1, as I do with most of Michael Bay's presentations. I mean, good lord. And to lose the skids and mud flap is especially embarrassing. Oh, God. Yeah. I almost feel sorry. Now, I need to uh, clarify just a few things as a Transformers nut. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are six d- Constructicons. Uh, I thought they- so. Six, and I think the one who's saying you want to see this all together, Animal, is uh, Hook, which is kind of odd because he's not the leader. Oh. Who is the leader of the Constructicons? Well, very oddly, it's, uh, I think his name is Scrapper. He turns into a bulldozer that forms Devastator's right leg. Oh, so it's kind of weird that the leader it doesn't form like a core like with all the other combiners. Ah, strange. Maybe he's the foreman, you know, like he gets the job done. Well, he wants everyone else to have a leg up on the competition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boys. But still, but still. Um. Anybody want to add in stuff before I carry on? Mm, well, actually, both. Nah, nah. We're gonna say well, it later. Well, let's see. Another constructor con is named Mixmaster, which makes him really fun at parties. Yeah, like it depends on what kind of party. Because if he's the DJ, he's going to mix it up. Or if you're in a nice, cool bar, he's going to serve you drinks. Exactly. Who else? Who else? Um, uh, let's see here. I mentioned Hook. Mm-hmm. Who. Hook, yeah, so let's scrapper, see. Hook, Mixmaster, Scrapper, Bone Crusher. Trying to recall. Scavenger. Oh yeah, Bone Crusher. He was a he was the uh, dump truck, if I remember right. He's a bulldozer. 
Oh, okay. Bulldozer. Second one. Scavenger. Oh, it's scavenger, not scavenger. Hook long haul. He's the dump truck. Uh. <laughs> but then they. So scrapper, bone cruncher, scavenger, mix master, hook, and long haul. Oh. The first combiner set. They're the Who, first really? depending on Well, the first not the first in, in continuity, but the first to toys to be released, the first introduction to the concept of combiners. Hmm. So you're you're saying that they're the first concept. Yes. Then of course, comics and cartoons would introduce the idea of combiners before the kit had come before. Mm. Also, like, I'm just trying to remember stuff like there's the animal Decepticons. Ah, the Predacons, which makes Beast Wars hell confusing. Oh, yeah. And also there's the... Oh man, there's Megaplex, so that's one going to be more confusing when if, if you've got no idea what you're watching. Megaplex? Yeah, the big one. Or oh, the Metroplex. Yeah, Metroplex. <laughs> Shows me what I know. Yeah, well, that was the city. I mean, it's all about... Uh, here's the thing. Grimlock and, and the Constructicons have a unique relationship. They both represent escalation in the war. Autobots and Decepticons crash land on Earth. Mm -hmm. Autobots are not war models. They they aren't fighters like the Decepticons. So even though they have a numerical advantage, they're just not as strong as an individual Decepticon. So they build the Dinobots, who are made for war. And that's why they're very aggressive. So they, uh, they trash the Decepticons more than a few times. Then... So they make the first combiner, Devastator, who in turn out uh, shines Dinobots in combat. And it's all about escalation. Because mm -hmm. then you get a bunch of combiners on both sides until they finally up the ante to a city-sized transformer. When did uh, Metroplex came into play? Uh, was, was he always there? Or was he a new addition? He was a new addition in the third season. Ah. And Redcon As into a city in the other ones, in the 3D show, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see here. Well, he wasn't in the three... Oh, well, I guess if you're talking 3D, there was Transformers uh, Cybervert. No, C Cybertron. Yeah, the Netflix one. Oh, he didn't appear in the Netflix one, if I remember right. Uh, he appeared in the video game War for Cybertron. Man, there's so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, here's, here's the short version. Either Metroplex is a new creation from after the movie, mm -hmm. and he serves as a replacement base when the Ark is destroyed. Or... You go with the canon of most other Transformers entries. He is a, called a Titan, and they were basically the transports of choice for the original Primes, the big leaders of Cybertron's history. And they only respond to either a city speaker or a Prime. Yeah, I remember that in the show before, like one of the Netflix show, but yeah. That's, that's why, I, yeah, it seems like a fun concept until they kind of overuse it. Because if I'm not mistaken, the Decepticon also had a big giant robot thingy too. Mm -hmm. A big, honestly, uh, kind of stealing Grimlock's thunder, a gigantic Tyrannosaurus named Triptychon. Oh yeah, him, I remember him. He was interesting. And then later they added Headmaster Cities with Fortress Maximus and Scorponok. And I'm really giving a Transformers history. We've kind of lost track of Grimlock versus Devastator. Yeah, it's okay. Here's the thing. Talking about Transformers is cool because 
you just say Scorponox and it just brings back old memories of the toy that I have of him. And he is huge. Unless you're thinking Beast Wars, in which case he's a, he's a small idiot. I, we don't talk about him. Uh, but still. He was killed in the most unceremonious way. Bug spray? F- knocked off a flying platform and drowned in lava. Ah, uh, along with along with the Beast Wars version of Starscream Pterosaur. Mm. <laughs> no comment on that one. But anywho, so they ba- they basically just it's like blinking you miss it. They're just gone. <laughs> uh, check available stage left. <laughs> Although okay. But with the comic, I have a question mm-hmm. because none of my knowledge of, of the shows will answer this. Mm-hmm. Why in the blue blazes are there two giant books with paper made of paper <laughs> for Spike to reference? Okay, uh, I'm just going to forward. Uh, I'm just going to forward a bit to that part. So um, we see Devastator. Uh, he's beating up uh, Grimlock and. He's really beating him up real good. Spike sees this and, oh no, I, I need to help. I need to find some way to help. And heads back into the Ark and reads giant books. Yep, giant books. Why do and... you see giant books? Don't they have like data banks on computers anyway? I will, uh, it, and how many trees did they have to cut down to make a Transformer-sized <laughs> book? I, I well, knew this was... It... Well, considering we're on a barren planet, I'd say a whole damn lot. Oh, this is not barren planet. This is Earth. Or should be Earth, I think. Yep. Are they? It's Earth. Yep. If The Ark crash landed on Earth. If we're talking about G1, yes, it should be on Earth, yes. Unless we're going to another continuity. Like, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> well, anywho. Uh, yes, I knew this was going to happen, and I made theories in my mind. So, uh, those books are actually um, energy cubes that are compressed into materials similar to paper and made it that way. And this is because Prime said that, oh, reading this data pad is not as um, nice as reading a uh, what is the human called books and as uh, one of the scientists to create said book because it smells nice it feels nice it feels traditional like how the humans want to do it <laughs> and hence we got this also it was a good balance for the table but the robots <laughs> don't have se- uh, senses of smell that's what you. T- that's what you think because Optimus Prime wants it and he gets it. <laughs> Norman, I I love you for trying so hard with that head cannon. I shall not contest. It. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's just strange to see. The more I look at it, right? The <laughs> okay. The the more I look at it, it's kind of awesome because. Uh, you, you, when you take a look, see how so how huge those books are, and the way that Spike stacks the book is just amazing. And once you realize something, you go scratching your head and ask why. Now, uh, to point at something, take a look at what behind Spike's back. In which panel? In any of the panel that he's reading a book. Oh, and his wings? Yes. Why did he stack those books? Probably uh, because his his wings can't get him that high up yet. Maybe he just got them and they're not as uh, strong a flyer. But, mm-hmm. uh, but in last year you said that this is post, this is likely post uh, Twilight's coronation. And even considering mm. at the start that it says Dear Prince and Dear Twilight Sparkle. Mm, say true, say true. I mean, we've. Well, who knows? Sorry, but, sorry, go ahead. 
Everyone wants to curl up with a good book. Maybe Sky, Spike wants to go rock climbing with a good book. <laughs> hey, that, that never hurts anyone. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, jokes aside, uh, we, we're kind of missing the point. We're kind of missing the point. I, I think this is just uh, a throwaway gag. But uh, when, when you take a look, see at the covers for one of the books, it says modern equestria for everyday co- uh, conversation. That means he had to learn another language in how many seconds or how many minutes it takes him to do so. Well, I, you said modern equestrian, Sorry, but it um, says Cybertron. Oh, my bad. Uh, my bad. <laughs> Ponies in the head, you know? I know, Norman, we've, but I feel like we've... Uh, if we may need to apply shock therapy to get you to get think outside the ponies. Never. Are <laughs> well, you gonna get shock next one? That's right. You know, come on, it's a charge. Oh no, man! Like I, I, I I'm shockingly okay with this. <laughs> <clears throat> wow, you willfully submit to electroshock, dude. Kinky. I didn't know that was your kink. Uh, Please. But anywho, uh, getting back on track, uh, Spike goes up onto the console, press some few buttons, and engage the uh, engine cycles. And I'm not sure... Yeah, okay, uh, that's a megaphone. Um, tells Grimlock to stay down um, for something. And, well, yeah, he, he does that because um, he's kind of forced to. And... While that's going on, the rockets ignite and blast Devastator, and they all toast and run away. And this is the awesome part, because um, the conversation between Spike and Grimlock is really good. So, um, what happened is... um, Grimlock says that, oh, you know what? I'm just going to read the whole line because I can't summarize it to do justice. Spike says, are you okay? Grimlock says, Grimlock's sturdy. And calls Spike a mighty warrior. Um, Spike just, you know, nonchalantly or shyly just says, ah, nah, man, like, I, I, I didn't do much. You fought six enemy at once and a giant. And Spike just says, I wouldn't last six seconds. All I did was speed reading and press a few buttons. And Grimlock says, no, you're wrong. You did more than uh, what even Grimlock can do. And Spike just says, what? Grimlock just breaks down. You learn a new language, operating a system in a short time. Uh, you think out outside the box and use the engine as cannons to defeat the Devastator, Decepticons. And you are inventive and smart. Spike still a little and will grow more big, more smart. Grimlock will always be Grimlock. Spike full of potential. Be proud, little Spike. Spike Grimlock is inspired by Spike, so Spike must continue to grow, okay? <laughs> and when Grimlock turns down to see Spike, he's just like cooing and awing because somebody's praising him. And I would too if it was Grimlock. And with that, uh, the comic ends for that chapter. Yay! Alright, so <laughs> since this part is done, I think it's time for Spiller to explain uh, do all Dinobots have the broken language or is it just Grimlock and if so, why? Uh, it, all Dinobots talk like that. Ah, okay. I mean, uh, you know, if I remember right, Snarl and Swoop, the, the Pterodactyl and the ste- uh, Stegosaurus, they were made after the other three. So they're a, they were a little bit smarter and a little bit more articulate, but only just. Only just a little bit. Hmm. Uh, okay. Well, uh, here's, uh, <clears throat> here's we kind of get the sort of sad part when you look at it. And this is especially sad because, well, Grimlock says that Grimlock is inspired by Spike, so Spike must continue to grow, okay? Uh, well... Uh, hold on. 
spikes down there and he's n- <sighs> sorry I'm just I'm just, I'm just at, the, at the loss of spikes down because he's not as awesome as Grimlock and then he starts trying with praises of what he's able to do in such short amount of time what he's able to do as a normal functioning person and then he says Grimlock would always be Grimlock and it's kind of sad because he's basically saying that this is all he is. He just he's just a giant mess of destruction that fights, but he can't do anything else. I mean, yeah, Autobots have shown that they can feel compassion for living creatures despite being sentient machines, but they can't be anything more than that. And in Grimlock's case, that's especially sad because he just can't he can't even fix his speech problem. He's never gonna grow. Ironically, you've you've t- tapped into the motivation for uh, a villain named Gigatron in a Japanese Transformers. Okay, cool. He, la- he laments that uh, Transformers are blessed with eternal life. I mean, they they can go on forever, but they can't grow or change. They're sort of locked in where they are. Which is why they the war just seems even more frustrating. They can't change what's going on. They can't stop it. Hmm. And Gigatron is a T Rex. Well, it's, nope. He is a, a multi former. He can transform into a dual headed dragon and later a single headed dragon. A giant hand, a water, a speedboat, a car, and a jet, and then later uh, a mammoth. Oh, and what else? What else? I feel like there was another. We were in like a t- ten forms, if I remember right. Ten. Jesus Christ! Because um, so- sorry, go ahead. So, yeah, the Autobots and Decepticons have limited programming. Depend, and it, it really depends on which continuity, which storyline you're following. Some can make choices and change, uh, Drift being a frequent example. But in others, the, they establish that the Transformers have a somewhat limited ability to change because they have been created and essentially programmed. Hmm. Fascinating. And Drift. Drift. Oof. Uh, I remember Drift. And if I'm not mistaken, he was the red car, right? In. Oh, uh, what show was that? Yeah, he. Uh, oh, he was a samurai in one movie? He was. Uh, that was Robots in Disguise, the what, 2011 series? Because there's two Robots in Disguise. But he's more, he was first introduced in the IDW comics as a white car, a very different personality. But he, in many cases, he's a former Decepticon mm. who switched sides. It's a very rare thing. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah. So, so he's probably one of the ones that shows Transformers do change. They can adapt and uh, become different. Oh, yeah. So I'm just I'm just bombarding y'all with Transformers continuities and trivia here. It's okay, man. I, I find it fascinating. Yeah, so we have you here, sir. We couldn't have survived this without you. I mean, I mean, My Little Pony's got five generations. Transformers, I don't know if they ever really stopped from 1980 to the present. They always had something on the table. Yeah, and it, it's confusing because there's a lot of things that's going on and nobody could agree on one thing. Well, I mean, you don't... I get, you can't retell the exact same story every time. There's got to be new explorations of the characters, new interpretations. Some things remain constant, but overall the shape needs to keep on changing. Mm-hmm. Like a transformer. In G5, apparently, you can retell the same story. 
Okay, don't even get me started on Japanese continuity because they try to lump everything together. Oh no! Like everything, it it, it will give you a headache. Oh no! They're doing the Dragon Ball thing. Jesus. Yep. Uh, it's like uh, no. Okay. Uh, the the whole concept is imagine if every show named Transform, sorry, any IP with the word Transformers is canon, but they all share a same timeline. And that's what's going on with the Japanese Transformers, or similar to that, is it? Just about, yeah. Oh, man. Yep, the, the Dragon Ball Dragon Ball thing. And, yeah. Oh, man. This, this is technically different from how Westerns uh, do it. You, a good example is, just say, Spider-Man. You have this story of Spider-Man, and then suddenly you go a few years ahead and you get another story and they retold the whole story again, blah, blah, blah. Like, how many origin story does Peter have? Well, technically only one. Uncle Ben! <laughs> True that. But anywho, <clears throat> let's continue on with Pinkie Pie and her shenanigans. So, we start off with, well, uh, Pinkie Pie on stage hosting a cooking show and she invites a guest from Cybertron and it's Gage and this this is funny because uh Pinkie Pie shows her right and Gage comes in from the left and this will be a re- reoccurring gag because yeah it's it's stage work and I think Silver you did some stage work before right Mm-hmm. Exit, stage left, stage right. <laughs> Boys. So, anywho, um, Gage is confused by what the hell is going on? Why am I here? And, okay, um, I'll just follow along. And we see that Pinkie Pie is making some cupcakes. Awesome. And Gage here is like, um, alright, I'll make some iron feeling casserole topped with my favorite energon reduction. Yay! Uh, a transformer is actually able to consume matter. I was the, under the impression that mouse are ju- there just for the vocalization. In all honesty, there are some scenarios where I see some bot eat scrap metal and stuff. I've seen it before, but I'm not 100% sure. What they really need is energon cubes to sustain themselves. But they do drink the Energon with their mouths. Oh. <clears throat> in fact, in one G one episode, you got to see what the Decepticons are like when they're drunk. Oh, that's cool. I mean, they call they call it over energizing, but they are drunk. Yeah. Oh, there's a funny bit about that. Uh, have you ever noticed where how Optimus Prime doesn't have a mouth? Yeah, in some kind of is yeah. Yeah, and uh, th- this is a comic panel I saw where. Um, I I think it was talking to, uh, the medic. Who was it? Um, I Iron Hide. No, Ratchet. Ratchet. Yeah, and um, Prime's like looking in the mirror and says like, "Oh, what? Uh, wow. Uh, what did you do? Uh, it's called a mouth. It's it's the in thing now. Like a lot of people are doing it. I'm thinking about um doing it myself. And Prime just looks at himself like, "Oh, um, I'm not used to this." <laughs> Uh, I forgot which issue was that, but it was kind of cool. I was always under the impression that uh, Optimus is a face guard plan constantly. Uh, mm, that too is in some continuities. Mm-hmm. I think that's most of it, because whenever he's going to action, he'll put on the face guard. But um, in the G1 series, that's his... Well, that's how he looks. Like, he's always have that thing on. He and he and Soundwave. Mm-hmm. So, anywho, um, continuing on, um, uh, Pinky is like questioning, like, uh, uh, is this, um, edible for ponies? But anywho, let's move on, and they want to do some other cooking, but the stage is crackling, and suddenly there's a 
Beach Bridge. And who pops out but Shockwave. Ooh, Shockwave comes in menacingly and says that, <clears throat> uh, I believe your vulgar uh, par- par- parlance. Parlance, you would say, I am here to spice things up. Aha! And Soundwave, sorry, Shockwave is here to cook up a meal for the ponies and show how talented he is at cooking. Yes? Yes, because he's replaced his usual hand and arm cannon with a grater and whisk. Oh, no. Kind of, ta- kind of taking the, the... The edge off? Yeah, so he's not very intimidating. Oh, no. He's whisk. going to cook up a storm silver. Gordon Ramses will be proud of him. Well, you can't, you can't turn Shockwave into an idiot sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon Ramses will find a way. Gordon Ramsay gets stepped on. Oh, you want to piss off the... Famous chef who can elevate you to greatness? That is illogical. Well, I'm going to be perfectly blunt. I have no chef. (laughs) I've seen here. I got no idea. I'm just saying memes. But anywho. um, Shockwave attacks a Pinkie Pie and Gage. And Pinkie tells Gage to go stage left. And uh, Gage is saying, what does this mean? What Sorry, what does that mean? You go right, I go left. But you said left. Care to explain to the general audience what that means, Silver? Well, basically, you because the audience is left and right, it's not the same as being on the stage. Mm-hmm. You always move things by stage right or left. Mm-hmm. So, so Pinky's really just getting her terms mixed. She's not wrong. But she's just, uh, she keeps switching the perspective on him. So, um, how, when, when somebody says stage left, what does that mean? It means if you're, fa- uh, I believe if you're fa- on the stage facing the audience, that's your, that's the left. So. But to the audience, it looks like you're going right. So it's basically the left hand, right hand thing. Yes. All right. So on stage, when we're looking at the audience, Somebody says stage left, we go right. The only yeah. time I ever remembered that term being used was from the old Canna Barbera cartoons with the pink cat, or was it called? Uh, Snugglepuss. Exit! A stage left! But <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anywho, carrying on. So, this is just going to be a lot of uh, speed up because. Uh, Pinky and Gage beat up Shockwave and um, evacuate some of the ponies and uh, Shockwave interrupts them and tries to kill Pinky. Uh, Gage saves her and rips out Shockwave's hand. That's ouch. Well, rips off Suddenly, he switched to a spork and spatula. I didn't know Shockwave was so uh, economic that he would combine a spoon and a fork as a weapon, but there you go. Yeah, he he, he knows his country. He knows his country. He's, he's, spork, he's sporking, <laughs> uh, which means he's certainly got a better grasp than Wally. Yeah. Uh, but, but I don't know. But, the goofiness of this issue, of this uh, chapter belies something rather terrifying. Mm. Uh, I believe there's a... In the IDW comics, they introduced the concept of pink energon, which is kind of weird because most energon looks pink. But the idea is that you take an entire population of organics and drain all their energy and turn that into energon. You're basically killing organics to fuel Cybertronians. But even an entire population can only fill up maybe half a cube or so. Oh. It's not very efficient. So these people are dying for nothing. Wow, that's not great. So this is what Shockwave is trying to do with ponies, and that's pretty dang dark. I would have not catched that if you haven't told me. 
So they're doing a, a silly slapstick battle against the rigid logic of Shockwave, but uh, they don't know how, how sick this could have become. Oh, yeah, that, that is true. That is true. Uh, the, yeah, that, that is not great. Oh, man, I, I got no idea how to continue after that. Like, you should have told me after we finish this thing, but yeah, cool. <laughs> ah, all right, and you are carrying on. Uh, Pinky trips a uh, shockwave and he hits his head on the table. He is dizzy for a bit, and Pinky and Gage play a bit of what you might call this a uh, PUBG and smack Shockwave in the head with a frying pan. And it flattens his head. In all honesty, he should be dead. But this is strapstick comedy, so he's not. Uh, they kick him back into the portal. And the day is safe once again. And the audience claps and cheers. So 47 minutes later. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So anyway, um. 47 minutes later, they continue on with their show, and Pinky graciously eats the casserole, and Gage eats the cupcakes. And yay, great success, woohoo, um, awesomeness, and we can see that Gage is uh, spitting out the food, <laughs> and, and comic ends. Ah. So, <clears throat> uh, let's go with how how do I want to do this mm, final thoughts I guess yeah and anything uh, yeah final thoughts Silver what do you think well like, like I said I, I adore the first one as it's an affirmation of Spike's character and gives Grimlock a chance to look cool as he's crushing uh, Decepticons and honestly it's probably the strongest character comparison uh, in in this series, so it gets my vote for best. Pinky and Gage versus uh, Shockwave, not so much. It's mostly just slapstick comedy, and I actually had to go online to look up who the heck is Gage mm -hmm. because I had never heard of him, never ever ever. And what did you found? Gage has only been. Okay, here's the thing with um, IDW. They finished a story of the Transformers. Like, they went through all these arcs, and then they did a reboot. And Gage is part of that reboot. She, I believe it's she. She? Really? It, yep. I believe that she is a protoform, newly born Cybertronian, who's uh, entrusted to RC and... What was her name? Searchlight? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, Greenlight. At, to Greenlight, okay, let's see here. Oh, oh, uh, that's her romantic partner. Her romantic partner, yes. Uh, let's see here. And let's go just, yep, it's still a her. Uh, yep, Greenlight, and basically... Well, Gage at one point was uh, held by a sort of Cybertronian cult before being rescued, but hasn't really gotten to distinguish herself uh, further beyond that. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Carry on, Silva? Well, not much, uh, just that Gage is, an, is really a non combatant. Because she is a kid. Looks like it. And her size. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, and looks like it because her size is pretty small. When you compare her and what you call this Pinkie Pie, uh, Pinkie Pie is just the size of a big plushie for Gage. Mm -hmm. So, what does that really should... say? Uh, it says that there might be an influx of of uh, plushy collections on Cybertron. Yay! I would find it hilarious if Shockwave actually had a Pinky plushie after this. <laughs> uh, that that would be nice. 
But still, uh... And just you wait until we have Fluttershy and Soundwave. Oh, man. I, I cannot wait for that one. That one is fun. That one is fun. I remember watching... Sorry, I remember reading it and... Yeah, Pinkie Pie... Sorry, Fluttershy is best pony. <clears throat> oh, no argument here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I thought Dredge was his best pony. Because best pony is the best pony. <laughs> but, but anywho, uh, anything else to add, Silver? Nope. Uh, I think I've I've geeked out enough over Transformers enough for one day. Alrighty then. And Jacob, what do you think? Well, there's not much to say. I mean, the comic's good. I mean, it's not as good as the first issue, which was bombastic. But still, uh, well, the first issue is better than the second one. Uh, but all in all, if you look at it, the comic kind of feels short. I mean, it's not as short as the last issue of Spirit of the Forest, but still. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> anything else? Uh, well, uh, I don't think there's anything to go. Oh, no, wait, hold on a second. I did. <laughs> now I remembered you kind of skipped me on the at the start when we were giving the first impressions. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Well, 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 well the matter of Ian Flynn again, Norman, you, rem- you remember that Sonic game uh, called Frontier? Yeah, I think so. Well, apparently Ian Flynn's the one that's writing the story for it. Ooh, Ian Flynn? Yeah. Um, the one who did the spike. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I am seeing him here. And, hmm, this is going to be interesting. And his writing here is good, uh, in, inspiring. But with a whole Sonic game? Oh man, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, well, we're gonna see that eventually. But all in all, I think uh, that's all for me. Alrighty then. And as for me, this comic was fun. It was a fun read. Um, the inspiring story with S- Spike and Grimlock is a lot of fun to read. Uh, the art is done nicely here. Um, there's no uh, how to say, there's no oddity like how it was in the first issue. And just the way that Grimlock just praises Spike, that that's just awesome. Like, the little guy really needs a confidence boost, and this is really great for him. Uh, with Pinkie Pie and Gage and Shockwave, Shockwave, yeah, that one was fun, but I would have rather have a comic where it's just Pinkie Pie and Shockwave fighting and it's just Pinkie Pie doing Pinkie Pie stuff where Shockwave is just puzzled by this and thinks it illogical and tries to make sense of everything but couldn't. <clears throat> that would have been a fun read. You, know, you you don't want to see shockwave when he when lo- his logic breaks. Uh, it's quite it's quite terrifying. Oh, has it been done before? Yes, in the IDW comics. Ah, do tell. Well, uh, he is on Earth seeding the planet with energon. Mm-hmm. When the Dinobots show up and they have to wear, they have to adopt beast forms to uh, handle the Energon buildup. So he's wondering why they are all attacking him. And it turns out it's from uh, a battle, a very minor battle, way back. The Dinobots held a grudge because he destroyed Energon they were supposed to be uh, protecting. And he's so undone by this petty grudge that he br- his logic breaks and he just becomes an engine of destruction. Even the Dinobots are scared by what they see. Hmm. That's interesting. So when, when Shockwave loses it, you're in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Huh. I guess that's something that you don't want to happen. 
<laughs> exactly right. Let's see. This was in Transformers Spotlight Shockwave. Mm. Oh, uh, a whole book dedicated to Shockwave? It was just one issue. Uh, all right, cool, cool. <sighs> well, I guess somebody cut the... What, 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 what do you call it? The fuse. Mm-hmm. I think you should that in that case before that happened. Uh, yeah. But anywho, um, I, I, I guess that's it. Those, those are my thoughts. So let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at emissionjima.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on YouTube, DeviantArt, and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, you can also do a search for After the Facts, but you better include the Silver Quill, or else you'll get a news program. Boo, they suck. I'm sure they do a fine job, but if you're looking to talk about ponies, we're in a... <clears throat> well, you're not going to get much pony coverage. And, uh, yeah, on my YouTube, you can also find links to my Patreon and ko so you can support after the fact. And if my applications go through, I will hopefully see people at Ponyville Cider Fest at the start of November. Ooh, awesome. Hope your application gets through. Awesomeness. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakapon Todkar, uh, under Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on the filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go check that out, guys. Uh, if you would like to... Sorry, also please... <laughs> and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitch Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrimeLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash MBS Show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Ducky Knight, Master of Black, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. I'm Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> That was illogical. I do not get the joke. Well, that's okay. It's just got a spring loose. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> one, one thing we forgot to talk about was the Transformers and the Terminator. That was an awesome crossover. <laughs> mm, that one I haven't seen. You know, it, it was... I feel like it would be short-lived. Yeah. Terminator just shoots a gun, gets stepped on. <laughs> Boom, done. Uh, it's in the... Uh, comic thing like uh, extra panels uh, pro- advertising panels it, it's pretty cool <laughs> it's, just, it's kind of like Bambi Bambi meets Godzilla just boom and Bambi survives why don't ask <laughs>